We've got a lot to talk about today, including the 21st Duck, some early impressions, and some news and notes on this packed version of Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for over a decade. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. All right. Uh, don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms. Thanks for making this your first listen of the day. And just a reminder, this is ad-free on Amazon, so check us out there. Also on Sirius XM. All right, so we've got a very packed show. I was originally going to make this two separate shows, but given some time constraints and given that I won't be here after tomorrow, or after, yeah, after tomorrow, I need to record all these now. So we're going to pack as much as we can into this one show. And then we've got a lot to talk about on the next two shows to finish off the week. It'll be finished early, but you'll you'll get why. So let's talk about the 21st Duck. This has always been a point of pride for the Anaheim Ducks, and it should be a point of pride for the Anaheim Ducks because they're one of the few teams that really gives back to their fans as much as possible and makes them a part of the game. And I love this story. So the Ducks have been doing the 21st Duck for a number of years where they basically sign a one-day contract. Well, they sign a contract and they're introduced onto the ice as the 21st Duck for that season. I think it's very cool. This season, this 21st Duck has shown a lot of guts. He had a heart transplant as an infant, then a kidney transplant, then he had chemotherapy, and he's still volunteering. So this year, the 21st duck is Trent Sullivan, who I, after reading his story, I went, yeah, he deserves it. He's very deserving. So he was born with a congenital heart defect, needed a heart transplant, And he's gone under multiple surgeries, multiple therapies. He just turned 30 and he's still kicking. And he's also volunteering for Camp del Corazon, which is part of the American Heart Association and shock. And he's still volunteering as much as he can, despite the surgeries, despite everything else. So good for him. Good for him to still be volunteering And this is someone that just encapsulates what it means to be the 21st duck. Someone that has gone through a lot of stuff. Someone that has lived just with, I don't want, I want to be careful with my words here. I don't want to say they lived with so much pain, but a lot of them have gone through some kind of pain in their lives that make it difficult to live in everyday life. And I feel for all those fans and for all those 21st Ducks that have gone through a lot. But for the Ducks to do this every year, mm, like this is something that I do every season on Locked on Ducks. I talk about the 21st Duck. Last season, I talked all about Ethan Baroldi, who I've actually met a few times because I used to be more involved with youth, youth hockey locally. And when I would do like announcing or scorekeeping and there would be Ethan, you know, dangling across the blue line and scoring goals. Yes, I've actually, you know, called Ethan Baraldi goals, which is really cool. He was a 21st duck last season. And this goes all the way back to uh, Lyra Doderlein, who is one of the best um, para athletes out there. Um, Does a lot of sled hockey has played internationally, has won gold, by the way. 
that's someone that encapsulates the spirit of the 21st duck. And this has gone on since the very beginning. Kai Quinones, who was the first one to be the 21st duck. Uh, how about the Katie Hawley game? Katie Hawley, who had Ricard Raquel uh, score for her. Man, that that to me is still one of the best things ever. Uh, Michael Liu, who has Parkinson's. This was during the 25th anniversary season. And he was out there with so much courage. And a lot of those former 21st Ducks, they were out there. Did you guys notice that during the beginning, all the other 21st Ducks were out there, all lined up, greeting this season's 21st Duck? That not only shows how well the Ducks take care of their 21st Ducks, but it shows a sense of community, a sense of belonging. Once you're a 21st duck, you are not just a 21st duck for the season. You're a 21st duck for life. And I've seen plenty of them around the pond. You know, I go there every so often and I'll see one of them pop up and I'll say hello. And, you know, they're just the nicest people. They always are. So going back to this year's 21st duck before we head to the intermission, so, Trent Sullivan learned from Tamu Solani, one of his favorite players growing up. He also got to talk to the team in the locker room. He also got to go in the locker room after the game, by the way. And I love this quote. He said, honestly, it was like talking to old buds. The fact that I was selected to be the 21st duck, I would have never thought of my whole life of living with what I have to deal with being a part of this it's such a huge honor end quote i love that but i also love that he was there after the game he was celebrating with the guys especially after that amazing hat trick by frank vetrano and to see trent there and to see all the guys is kind of like cheering like in that spirit that was great that's a moment that could have been kept private in the locker room but the fact that they in included Trent in the little kind of mini celebration I thought that was so cool so cool of the Ducks to do that they've got to keep doing this for years to come have you noticed that ever since they started this 21st Duck um, they've played well in fact it was shown on the screen that the Ducks have not lost a home opener since 2015 so pretty much since they began doing the 21st Duck save for one year They've won all their home openers. So, Ducks, you keep being fantastic. You keep on supporting the 21st Duck program. And let's see it continue to flourish. And I think we'll see more home opener victories as long as they keep doing this. It's good karma also. It is very good karma. All right, we're going to head into the first intermission. Going to talk about some early impressions. We'll get to that on the other side. And now a word from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. Patience underlined if you're a Ducks fan. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, like Frank Vetrano, from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride, every time, or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that W. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, excluding supply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. And this is also brought to you by the Game Time app, which I've used several times. I've used it on Angels tickets. Yes, by the way, Angels tickets last season 
were worth one dollar with like a three dollars uh fee but four dollars four dollars to watch the angels i mean yeah they were terrible but at least i only had to pay four bucks to watch the angels and to see shohei otani when he was playing so game time consistently has the lowest prices in the market much better than those other apps with the game time app you get your price right there just one tap and you're in the game it is just that simple last minute tickets flash deals which i've used and zone deals and is the only app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with the game time download the game time app create an account and use locked on nhl for 20 bucks off your first purchase maybe check out a ducks game while you're there terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on nhl for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed all right let's talk about some early impressions so now i did start off the last podcast by talking about the defense i kind of want to make a caveat to that and kind of not correct but you know try to clear up what i was talking about yes the ducks have allowed a lot of shots it is sounding like a broken record however they didn't allow 40 shots and these were against two very good teams the vegas golden knights had a perfect record for a while they're the defending cup champions of course they're going to come out and try to slaughter you and you know we expected that the carolina hurricanes in some circles they're seen as a per, as a cup favorite again they made it to the eastern conference semifinals the last couple seasons they're very very good in fact they made the eastern conference finals last season so what i'm trying to say is while they did give up a lot of shots while they had some defensive lapses these were against top notch teams so you have to keep that into consideration and another thing that i need to point out with the pairings right now a young guy with an old guy yes some of the vets are making up for some of the mistakes the rookies are making but they have to make these mistakes they have i feel like they have to make some of these mistakes in order to learn in order to get more accustomed and more acclimated to the national hockey league which is a much faster league than the chl much faster than you know ncaa's it's a whole new world out there and those young defensemen there's going to be some growing pains they're going to learn but i'm not saying the defense is bad in fact there was some promising impressions on this defense one of which was an active stick they were utilizing an active stick very well and even greg cronin um, talked about the defense a little bit after sunday's game saying that you know they really helped each other out which is good you want that you want your guys to help each other out you also want to have certain guys with a little more responsibility i get that so far the defense is fine i'm okay with it i really want to see what the defense does against these next couple of teams i want to see how they do defensively against dallas that's going to be a big test because i have dallas as my pick to win the cup this season some other early impressions uh Pavel mintikov i will admit he's done better than i thought one aspect of his game that i truly think is going to get better is the hockey iq is going to get better the decision making is going to get better once he stops pinching all the time I mean, he's not doing it all the time. But once he kind of hangs back and has an effective back check, then I think we're going to see some marked improvement 
in Mintikov's game. Sam Carrick, he's got to stop getting in the box. Now, I was impressed with his goal on Sunday's game, but he still has to get out of the box, and he has to be careful with that. Uh, some other early impressions. Z doing his thing. Um, Zegris at times is pressing a little bit, so he kind of has to be a little bit careful with that. Um, Troy Terry has been very active. Um, Troy, be aggressive, man. I mean, Troy's making some good plays and making a couple of good passes, but I think there was, this happened once, only once so far, where I think he could have taken a shot and elected to pass. Nah, Troy, buddy, we, we got to see you score some goals. I mean, granted, him passing off has made some good opportunities so far. The biggest impression, that McTavish line. I'm a big believer in Mason McTavish. I truly think this is going to be his breakout season. I've said it numerous times. I'm going to say it again. I think this is it. Keep McTavish and Frank on that same line, and you're going to reap the benefits, I promise. And I think Greg Cronin sees that. I think he's beginning to see which players are gelling the best. So I can't wait to see what Greg Cronin does the rest of the season. And early impressions on Greg Cronin, yeah, so far a passing grade. <laughs> he's he's looked fine so far. But, you know, only two games. Time will tell. But already I'm seeing some differences in schemes compared to Dallas Eakins. So this is looking good so far. It's a good start. All right. We're going to head into the second intermission and have some odds and ends to talk about after this brief word. Stay locked in. And now a word from FanDuel. All right, let's talk about FanDuel. Right now, you can snap into the action this season, this NFL season, with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 200 bucks back in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and, hey, kick off the new NHL season. FanDuel, the official online sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network, and please Gamble responsibly. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez. We're going to keep this segment rather short. Uh, No video apologies for that because we have a little bit of breaking that I do want to get to on this final segment. I did say there'd be some odds and ends, and there is a new odds and end. Um, By the time this gets out, this may have been already reported, but Leo Carlson's back on the ice. So... I guess that injury that we didn't know the determined time of how long he'd be out, well, it turns out not long because Leo Carlson was seen back out practicing. He was out on the ice and was actually in the first line with Trevor Zegris and Troy Terry. So this is good news because this puts Trevor Zegris back on the wing, frankly, where he belongs. And this gives Henrik a little bit of flexibility as well because, you know, now you could put him in the second or third line. But what I did notice, and this is according to Derek Lee, that Henrik is down to the third line. I like this, and I'll tell you why. Putting Zegris and Carlson in the same line gives it that one-two punch and putting Terry right there. Now you have three players that both have high IQs and can make good decisions. Trevor Zegris, for a while, was pass first. Uh, for, For a while, actually, Trevor Zegris wasn't the kind of guy that would look to shoot. He would look to try to find the open pass, try to find the open guy. We've seen that several times. We saw that on World's Juniors a few years ago. We saw that with his buddy, Sonny Milano. So this is fine. Troy Terry on a wing with Leo Carlson, I think is also going to pay dividends for Leo Carlson because this might help his confidence and for Leo Carlson to have someone to, I, I shouldn't say look up to because Terry's not that much older than Leo Carlson, but maybe a bit of a mentorship of sorts. And I don't know, 
maybe this is the route for captaincy for Troy Terry. You know, you want to be the quote unquote elder statesman. Yes, I'm actually using the phrase elder statesman when it comes to Troy Terry, but in this particular case, it fits. Because you want that mentor. You want that person to look up to on that line. So I think this fits perfectly. And you cannot separate the Vetrano McTavish Strom line. That line has been fantastic so far this season. That line has accounted for almost all the goals for the Ducks so far this season, including the Vetrano Hattie. That line just works brilliantly. That line needs to stick together for now. Greg Cronin absolutely making the right decision on this one. So where does that put Adam Henrique? That puts him down on the third line with Bo Gru and Jakob Silverberg, which is interesting because now you have someone that can be a lethal scorer, but have him on a depth line. This will work really well for Bo Gru, who likes to have finishers on his lines. He's had that numerous times in the San Diego system. You know, Bogru would often be paired with someone that had a tendency to be a finisher. And I think this fits perfectly for Bogru as well. Jakob Silverberg, that's fine for him too. Now that bottom line, um, it was reported that it was Johnston and Jones switching off on that fourth line with Carrick and Leeson. If you already have Sam Carrick on your line, then you don't need Johnston on your line as well. You already have one tough guy. You don't need a second one. And you don't want to hurt your offense. You know, you still want to benefit for the good of the team. And for the good of the team, you got to put Max Jones out there with Sam Carrick and Brett Leeson. So that's just my thought on that. Uh, Yeah, defensive pairings. A little bit of a change. Fowler and Gouda, so you have the two vets on the top line. Minty and Labushkin on the second line. Then you have Vakaninen slash Luno rotating with Lacombe. So I guess we won't know that third pairing for a while. I liked the idea before of having a veteran with a rookie. Obviously, they did give up a lot of shots, and there was some defensive lapses there. And maybe this is Greg Cronin's way of trying different things and seeing what finally sticks on defense. And again, I'm not saying the defense was all that bad, but it is a point of improvement that they have to make. And they need to make these kinds of adjustments if they're going to be successful in the long run. Now, Leo Carlson does want to play against the Dallas Stars. Dallas is a tough team. They have a lot of muscle on their side. I don't know if I would rush him back. I might wait to bring Leo Carlson back for a game or two because the Ducks' upcoming schedule, and I may as well bring up the schedule now because this will be the last time we talk about the Ducks until next week because they're playing the Stars on Thursday. Then they're playing those dreaded Coyotes on Saturday. Another pair of weekend games, Saturday against the Coyotes, and then Sunday against the Big Bad Boston Bruins. So that's the upcoming schedule for the Ducks at home against Dallas in Arizona, home against the Bruins. All right. So I did mention that there's three games coming up. Not going to talk about those games until next week for reasons. Again, in the process of, you know, getting a place and whatnot. And also because the next two shows are going to be about the San Diego goals. So there is going to be still a goals Thursday episode, but a late Wednesday episode will drop. And I do this every year as well. We had a show where we met the Ducks. Now we're going to have a show where we meet the San Diego goals. So that's coming your way late Wednesday. Meet the goals. And then Thursday, our first episode official Locked On Goals episode where we will discuss the weekend set against the Ontario Reign, a very successful weekend set. So be on the lookout for that. All right, that's going to do it for this podcast. Once again, thank you all so much for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, ad free on Amazon, and also on SiriusXM. 
you could follow me on the Twitter sphere at StimpyJD for now. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. You could drop me a line at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. And once again, thank you all for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. For Locked on Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day. Please remember to be kind out there, uh, be safe, and ducks fly together.